Okay, here's our PowerPoint on carbohydrates. I'm going to go through this with you. Uh, so, really cool thing is how plants make carbohydrate from CO2, water, and energy from the sun. And our, our basic formula for all those carbohydrates are 6 CO2 plus 6 water plus energy from the sun equals C6H12O6. Right? And this is the formula for all simple sugars. And it's, I just think it's so cool. It's just amazing that you can go out there and look at a giant tree and think that the CO2, the building blocks, were actually plucked from the air in the, harnessing the energy of the sun that that tree was made. And that's really, that, you know, again, I find that really amazing. Um, maybe you're not, maybe you don't find it as amazing as I do, but anyway, you need to know it. Uh, so these plants make their own carbohydrate in, in that manner. And when they make the C6H12O6, one of those is called a monosaccharide. Two of those together is called disaccharide. And three or more are put together to make complex carbohydrates or polysaccharides. And those are, uh, this is all in your chapter as well. The most important simple sugar for humans is going to be glucose, a monosaccharide. And that's because that's what your brain and central nervous system, as well as your, your actual red blood cells, use for fuel. And again, this is all in your book. Okay, so we talked about simple sugars. Basically, simple sugars are just two of those carbohydrate molecules together, one or two. Starch or carbs tend to be terms that can frequently use and be used interchangeably or complex carbohydrates uh, are three or more. They're all words for different types of carbohydrates. So when we talk about from a nutritional perspective, good sources of carbohydrates are pretty much all plants because the plants make the carbohydrate from the CO2 and the water and the sun. So while a piece of steak is going to have very small amount of carbohydrates in it, even those carbohydrates came from plants, right? Okay. So when we talk about glucose, your very important molecule, it's rarely found around alone in nature. It's usually bonded with other simple sugars to form disaccharides. Okay. But eventually, in the GI, it's digested and separated, and glucose is just so important because it's, it, it provides energy for your cells, including and especially your brain and central nervous system. Right? That's why it's so, so, so important. Okay, So make sure and cover in your book the difference between mono and disaccharides. And polysaccharides, it's explained really well. I'd like you to read up a little bit on dietary fiber versus functional fiber, insoluble and insoluble fiber. These are all very important. Um, talk about starch and complex carbohydrates are for the most part used interchangeably. Um, there's a typo in this slide. It should say glycogen, not glycogen. So remember that this is the storage form of carbohydrates in humans. And again, this is in your book. So we store this in our muscles and we store it in our liver. When it's stored in the, in the uh, in the muscles, it's got to be used in the muscles. When it's stored in the liver, it can be re-released back out into the bloodstream so that you can use it later on uh, in your brain, central nervous system, red blood cells. So it's really important to understand where that glycogen is stored. In the muscles is one place where it's stored, but it has to be used there. In the liver, it can be spit back out, basically, turn from glycogen back into glucose and go back into the bloodstream. Okay. So when we look at any nutritional label, we should be able to tell how much carbohydrate, fiber, and sugar are in each, right? So if you look at this label, you'll see about halfway down the label it has total carbohydrate, total dietary fiber, total sugar. It also has how much any person should have. And again, remember, this is based on a 2,000 calorie diet. So I should be able to ask you how many, how many calories come from carbohydrate in this food. There's 10 grams of total carbohydrate. And how many calories are there per gram of, for carbohydrate? There's four, so 10 times four is 40. Very simple. I can ask you how many calories come from sugar. Sugar is a carbohydrate. There's five grams of sugar, four calories per gram. So again, we're looking at 20 calories from sugar. So you should be able to calculate that on your own from this nutrition label. Okay, so when we digest our carbohydrates, digestion begins in the mouth. We got chewing is our mechanical digestion. We've got salivary amylase is breaking this stuff down. Okay, then moves on to the stomach. We've got hydrochloric acid breaking it down. We got, <coughs> excuse me, we've got pancreatic amylase also breaking it down. But really, the rest of the digestion and absorption happens in the small intestine. You know, I said when we covered digestion that 
that that is going to be your answer for almost all everything where it is digested and absorbed. Okay. So carbohydrates stored then once it's digested in the liver and the muscles as glycogen. And again, I'm saying this for the third time, in the muscles it can't leave. It has to be used there. In the liver it can leave and then later enter the bloodstream as glucose. Okay. Again, it's very important because the brain and central nervous system have to use it. So low blood sugar or low glucose means that your brain can't, doesn't have the fuel it needs. So I'm not going to ask you a whole lot of questions about what normal blood glucose is because if, if you don't have them in context, these numbers are practically meaningless. But you know, before a meal, 70 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. Per deciliter, that's a unit of volume. And after a meal, it's going to be higher. Okay. So how is blood glucose regulated? Well, basically, primarily you have two hormones. You have insulin and glucagon that have opposite effects. Again, this is all in your book. So insulin released from the pancreas. It causes your cells to take up the blood glucose into the cell. What it does is it activates these carriers that just carry it right across the bloodstream into the cell. And that's how the blood sugar goes down, right? It's high in the blood. Then it, when it leaves the blood to go into the cell, then it's stuck in the cell and it can't leave. So the blood sugar isn't high anymore. Glucagon has the opposite effect of insulin. It tells the liver to, have, to perform glycogenolysis, which basically means breaking down glycogen. So it breaks glycogen back down into glucose and releases it into the bloodstream. Okay. So how are carbohydrates broken down? We've got to break carbohydrates down into ATP. Remember, ATP is that universal energy carrier for all living things. So the first part of breaking this down is called the glycolytic pathway. Right? It's an anaerobic, which means it doesn't require oxygen. And it occurs in the cytosol of the cell. So the cytosol is like the big soupy part of the cell. You've got a big cell. If your cell was like a water balloon with a bunch of organs and things floating around in it, the, uh, the cytosol would be just the water. right? And that's where this first step of uh, glycolysis happens. right? So it happens very rapidly. So it can provide very energy very quickly, but it has a downside in that only a small portion of the glucose is turned into ATP, that, that chemical energy, that universal energy carrier. So you get lactic acid produced and released into the blood, and you're going to build up of that, and it's just not sustainable. The lactate is later utilized as, as fuel in the mitochondria of the cell, the other portion of the cell where the rest of the breakdown happens, but it's just simply not sustainable for a long time. So that's very important to understand. The glycolytic pathway is the first part of breaking down carbohydrate. It occurs in the cytosol of the cell, does not require oxygen. It happens quickly, but it's not sustainable. Okay, after that, we've got the oxidative pathway. That occurs in the mitochondria. So if you remember your high school biology, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, right? That's where most of your energy breakdown happens. And it can just keep chugging along, chugging along, chugging along. Those mitochondria just put out energy all the time. Now, this system is not as fast as the glycolytic pathway, but it's sustainable, right? So that's the important part. So this oxidative pathway, it provides energy at rest and during longer duration or less intense activities. So if you're sleeping, sitting around, watching this video, you're using mostly the oxidative pathway to get the energy from the molecule. So this oxidative pathway, what it does, it creates ATP, CO2, and water. You breathe out the CO2. And then we go back to how plants create, uh, create carbohydrate. They do it out of the CO2. So the plant harnesses the CO2, makes carbohydrate, and an animal then eats the CO2 that's been turned into, into carbohydrate and releases it again. Very cool. Okay, so remember, two types of energy pathways. We've got glycolytic, does not use oxygen, occurs in the cytosol, fast but not sustainable. Oxidative, which utilizes oxygen, happens in the mitochondria, slower but sustainable for a very long time. So read about, I'd like you to read up on the section of your book about how carbs fuel your body during fasting and how without carbohydrates you go into ketosis. Basically fat is not completely broken down and you've got some of these things called ketone bodies that enter the bloodstream and they're not really very good for you. Uh, you've also got small amounts of protein that can be made into sugar, but that's not really ideal. Okay, so good sources of carbohydrates are gonna be primarily complex carbohydrates that are found in whole grains. For simple carbohydrates, you find fruits, juices, 
generally thinks it tastes sweet and dairy. Okay. So make sure you know that AMDR, the appropriate macronutrient, macronutrient distribution range for carbohydrates, um, 45 to 65% of your calories, or at least 130 grams a day. So you should be able to calculate how many calories that is, 130 grams times 4 calories per gram of carbohydrate. Um, that's minimum. And that's that 130 grams per day is minimum just for your brain and central nervous system. Okay. Understand where naturally occurring sugars usually are, such as in dairies and fruits and things like that. Understand where you would find added sugars. Again, that's all in your chapter. Read up on that. If you got any questions, post it to the discussion forum. Okay. There's a great section on page 104 on your text on uh, finding added sugars. Okay. Other issues with carbohydrates, you've got risk of increased dental caries or cavities. Uh, read up on your section on lactose intolerance, which means that people don't have an enzyme called lactase. They can't break the lactose all the way down, and they get diarrhea, basically. Um, also, fructose in large amounts will have a laxative effect for some people. Um, okay, so artificial sweeteners also cover artificial sweeteners in your text, generally regarded as safe not basically harmful, although, you know, if you eat anything in a large enough amount, I think it would be harmful. Okay, so you're going to read on diabetes, type 1 and 2, understand the difference between those. That's in your PowerPoint, it's in your book, right? Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.